Good morning, I'm Mr. Brisella, and uh, today I wanted to discuss the chain rule and a, a specific case of it, uh, the chain rule, the generalized power rule for my math 1325 class. First of all, the chain rule. The chain rule is a derivative rule that's used to differentiate compositions of functions. It says, if you want to differentiate with respect to x, some composition, I'll say, f of g of x. You differentiate the outside function, leaving the inner function as it is. You differentiate the outer function, leaving the inner function alone. But you then multiply by the derivative of the inside function. And so, a composition of functions, f composed with the g of x, you have a uh, outer function, you have an inner function. You differentiate the outer function, leaving the inner function alone. Uh, so the derivative of the outer function is uh, uh, what you find. Leave the inside uh, function alone, then you multiply by the derivative of the inside function. A specific case of the chain rule that I want to look at, this is uh, primarily what you'll uh, be using in your homework, is the generalized power rule. This is a specific case of the chain rule. Realize that the generalized power rule said, or that the power rule says that if you have x to the n power, you can differentiate that in terms of x by bringing down the exponent and subtracting 1. You've been using that general power rule uh, I mean just the power rule. You've been using that since we started differentiating. The here it is. You remember this one? Surely you remember that derivative rule. We've been using it since we started differentiating. It's the primary rule we've had. Suppose we have a function of x. Suppose we wanted to differentiate some function of x that's raised to a power. Instead of just having a single letter to uh, power, suppose you have a quantity to power. According to the chain rule, realize we have a composition here. We have the, exp, uh, the, exp, the power function uh, composed with the inner function f of x. So to differentiate a quantity raised to power, if it's anything other than just a letter to power, you differentiate the outer function. That's what this says. You differentiate the outer function but you leave the inside function alone. And when you're differentiating that power, you know you subtract 1 to get the new exponent. But then, according to the chain rule, you multiply by the derivative of the inside stuff. So the inside stuff is that f of x. So times f prime of x. And this generalized power rule is going to be very important because that's what you use. Say you have a square root, and the thing under the square root is something more than just a single x. Then that's uh, when you're going to have to use the uh, generalized power rule. Or if you just have any quantity raised to a power. I have an example here. Okay, I have an example. Okay. We have the function y equals negative 6 times 9x squared plus 8x to the 7 halves power. So, y is equal to negative 6 times 9x squared plus 8x to the 7 halves power. This is a good example of the generalized power rule. To find the derivative, y prime, you take the 7, we know how to differentiate the power, you just take it and multiply it by the coefficient. So 7 halves times negative 6, the inside stuff stays the same, 9x squared plus 8x. And we bring down the exponent, we subtract 1, 7 halves minus 2 halves gives us a new exponent of 5 halves. We then have to multiply by the derivative of the inside stuff. What's the derivative of 9x squared plus 8x? We're going to have to multiply by that. Well, the derivative of 9x squared, that's an 18x plus 
the derivative of 8, I mean of 8x, the derivative of 8x is just an 8. And let's see, what can we do? We could say that that is 2 goes into 6 3 times, so we have a negative 21 times a 9x squared plus 8x to the 5 halves power times the 18x plus 8. And I guess there's not much we can do to clean that up. We could take out a common factor here. There's a common factor of 2. I guess we could do that. But I bet you my math lab would take this right here. I'm betting my math lab would take that, but one thing we could do, we could say, okay, there's a common factor of 2. Take out the t uh, common factor of 2 and multiply it by negative 21. That'll give us a negative 42. I'm going to go ahead and write this term next, I mean this factor next. We divide it by 2, so that would be a 9x plus 4, and we still have that quantity to the 5 halves power. 9x squared plus 8x. Either one of those. I can't say taking out that common factor of 2 was really worth the effort. But to differentiate a quantity raised to a power, use the generalized power rule. You differentiate the outer function first. That's the power function. Bring down the exponent, subtract 1 to get the new exponent. You then have to multiply by the derivative of the inside stuff. Let's look at another one. Oh, I got a good one here. Look at this one. Uh, let me move it down here for you. They want us to find the derivative of f of x. I'm going to rewrite this because I know that writing's small there. Here's the function. f of x is equal to 8 times the square root of 8x squared plus 3. And we know what to do when we're differentiating radicals. We have to rewrite that radical using an exponent. What exponent is equivalent to 1 half? Yes, I mean, t what exponent is equivalent to a square root of one half? So I answered myself. And there's the function we're going to differentiate. So using the generalized power rule, you take the one half times the eight. You leave the inside stuff alone. The inside stuff stays as it is. You subtract 1 to get the new exponent. You then multiply by the derivative of that inside stuff. Well, 1 half times 8, let's clean this all up. We know that's 4. That would be an 8x squared plus 3 to what power? 1 half minus 1, yes, I agree with the negative 1 half, times, what's the derivative of 8x squared plus 3? Just a 16x, I agree. We can multiply the monomials. You wouldn't want to leave it like this. I'd multiply the monomials. 4 times 16x, that's a 64x, times 8x squared plus 3 to the negative 1 half. my final answer. Get used to the fact that if you have a square root with something other than just a single x to differentiate that function, you're going to have to use the uh, generalized power rule. I even think I have a video where I'm working in a uh, word problem where that pops up. So that's in another one of the uh, videos. But we even had that uh, situation with a radical. It was messier than this one, I'll tell you pop up in uh, one of the word problems. Let's see if I can find another one. Oh, I think I have. Okay. Here's one. Y equals 1 over 6x minus 5 to the fourth power. 
If we're going to differentiate this, we could, at this point, all we can differentiate is quantities raised to powers. Now, in the next homework assignment, we'll see something called, no, I guess we have, wait a minute, I think we've already looked at the product rule and the quotient rule. I'm getting all confused. We've already looked at the product rule and quotient rule, so I guess you could use the quotient rule here, but I wouldn't recommend that. I would rewrite that using a negative exponent. Pick the 6x minus 5 to the 4th, move it up. So we just have a 6x minus 5 to the negative 4 power. And now that problem is just tailor-made for that general power rule. Differentiating y prime is equal to, bring down the negative 4, the inside stays as it is. Negative 4 minus 1, that's a negative 5. Is that it? Is there anything else to do? Yes, what else do we need to do? We need to multiply by the derivative of 6x minus 5, the inside stuff. You differentiate the outside, leaving the inside alone. Then you multiply by the derivative of the inside, and the derivative of 6x minus 5 is just a 6. That gives me a negative 24 times 6x minus 5 to the negative 5. And my math lab would take that. Let's suppose they did it with negative exponents. We could then convert it back to a positive exponent. That's a negative 24 on top. Take the 6x minus 5, move it down, make it a positive 5 on the bottom. Either one of those. And OK. I think I'll take a break and let y'all absorb all of that. So, bye-bye.